today on our 1989 Corvette Roadster Daily Driver we are going to install an aftermarket cooling fan controller uh, we've had an issue with getting the factory relays to talk to the PCM or the brain uh, to get it working like it's supposed to be so what I've done is I've ordered an aftermarket controller uh, one good thing about this controller and uh, I tried a different type that had a block sensor from Rock Auto that didn't fit so we're going with uh, the type that has a radiator sensor but this one has a temperature control um, adjuster on it so we will be able to control what temperature our fan kicks on this is our sensor here and um, I don't feel real comfortable with doing it but I'll, I'll have to be very careful but we will this will go um, through the fins in the radiator between the uh, tubes we definitely don't want to pierce the tube when we install this this has a um, installation and holder tool that is uh, not perfect and we'll go through that but we're going to use that and that'll hold the sensor in the first thing I think we're going to do um, is find a place to mount the um, relay you want the relay mounted where you can access the uh, little uh, temperature controller and I've closed the hood down and uh, our rod is not going to hit this it comes right above it and it's out of the way here and you want to put your sensor from what it says um, as close as you can to uh, the hose where it comes back into the radiator we're going to have to pull the fan shroud off remove the fan and we've got enough access I've looked between the um, AC condenser and the radiator where you can get to both sides we'll have to do that because um, these have a mount uh, that comes on each side that will actually hold it in the radiator and uh, we want to make sure that we have enough room for our leads to get to where they need to go um, and we do here so I'm going to bring it in here and I'm actually going to put uh, bolts with nuts and drill out holes in the top of the uh, shock tower clearing here um, we should have plenty of room uh, and we're away from any high heat sources I didn't want to mount it on the radiator shroud uh, so I think this is going to be a good location. So that's where we're going to go with that. in for uh, your AC piece here uh, that has to come off and uh, there's some bigger ones on each side and some small ones across the top but the top part of it now should easily enough just lift right off and uh, we'll have to keep this close by because uh, we're actually going to run a wire through here to go into there so I'm just going to lay it up here for now okay you can see my mounting position here you can see how I went between the cores you can see them running thin little cores and this was not easy you have to be real careful um, and I hope I did not puncture a core in the radiator um, if I did that's just a learning curve at my expense but this will mount through here and the other thing will zip tight where it won't move this is close to the inlet and there were it was a little bit of thinner material that came out but I gently just took the tool and got in there and kind of reamed it out a little bit um, Hopefully we did not puncture a core in the radiator. You can see uh, the back side, the stop on it. Uh, it's just a zip tie. 
that runs in beside it. This is not going to fit evenly. Uh, it should be enough to clear our fan shroud. Hopefully we're down low enough. Um, and hopefully we did not pierce the, the radiator, one of the radiator cores when we did this. I don't think we did, but we'll see when we fill it back up. I mean, that's all we can do. Okay, what I've done is got my cover back on. It is touching the back of this, but it's not really binding bad. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and start the car and run it before I put it all the way back together. And I've topped the radiator off and put the hose back on and make sure that we don't have any leaks in the radiator. Radiator's good. We don't have any leaks. So we didn't damage the radiator. Still don't like doing that. And I don't recommend doing this unless you have no other options. Uh, a lot of hot rods are done this way. That's just the way they do electric fans on like hot rods and stuff. But made me very nervous and I'm still not 100% comfortable with jamming stuff through the radiator and if you do it don't force it don't put anything sharp through it make sure that you're going in between the fins uh, the diameter of that thing is uh, borderline I mean uh, just be very careful if you do this and risk losing a radiator if you do I don't know whether to recommend one of these to you or not um, it's got two outputs the orange is supposed to be for one fan and the purple is for two fans the orange no matter what you do it runs constantly even with a car off but the purple one I tried it as a lead and now I'm getting a reaction but this is not how it's supposed to be wired the blue wire that I'm using as a supply on the di diagram said that it was supposed to be red, but I figured out that's not the case. But if I run it off the secondary for a secondary fan, like fan number two, it mine only has one, it seems to be working. But how reliable is it? I can't tell you that. It's keeping it right at uh, 194. It's going to be separate than uh, what I'm showing on my dash. We're just going to have to try and see. Um, and if you use one of these, you might want to have an override switch where you can kick it on manually or at least know how to do that. And what I'm going to do with this one, if I run it off the ground on the fan, I'm going to run an LED on the dash that shows me when the fan is actually running. I don't know about trusting this system. Okay. We'll see. So... What I found out on this aftermarket uh, cooling controller for your fan uh, made by Hayden and ordered through Rock Auto, um, I don't recommend it. Uh, however, if you have no other alternative or you want to make your Corvette run cooler or whatever you're using that needs a fan controller, bench test it first uh, before you start poking in your radiator. I got lucky. Um, they wired this thing wrong the color codes don't match the wiring diagrams and on my orange lead is the lead that they said was supposed to be used for a one fan system i'm just getting 12 volts all the time out of it no matter what uh, the two fan system the secondary wire will run and i can actually control the temperature on this little blue dial down there and uh, it's working for now also the green wire for the AC, when I give it power 12 volts, it will override and kick the fan on. The only output I can use is what appears to be the secondary, which is the wrong color. Uh, they said that this color was a different color, blue. They said this was supposed to be blue, that's purple, and the orange wire was supposed to be for the single fan system, and the blue wire was supposed to be red, and that is your constant 12 volt power supply at 30 amps. Um, how I'm going to wire this is with a, a, a safety secondary override. I'm going to leave uh, some caps on some wires down here 
where I can go back into this if this were to fail in traffic and I can get out, pop the hood, and twist the wires together to make the fan work because I do not trust it. Um, but, you know, it's working right now, but not the way that it's supposed to work. So my recommendation, I can't recommend it. Um, but, you know, if you do buy one, find a way to bench test it before you start making holes in your radiator. I was almost very disappointed until I started playing with it. Um, and another thing that I'm going to have to do, and I'll do that probably tonight, is uh, I just put a fail-safe uh, thermostat in from AutoZone um, maybe 250 miles ago. I've driven the car that much, and it's already failed. It's stuck in the open position. As soon as I turn the car on, it starts heating the radiator up. And um, I'm going to have to replace that, and I'm going to do that. But that's that. Um, very shady system. Uh, it was built in China, and, you know, you would think the whole Chinese economy is temporary and it's going cr to crash when all these parts could just get returned and they have to refund money on everything they make. Sad. All right, we've got our... Uh, relay button down and bolted through here and all the wire loom and stuff I use the original uh, relay supplies uh, for the ignition hot and the all-time hot uh, just cut the this one off and I'll use that fuse link for something else and then got this running in um, in the harness and everything tied down wire loomed checked make sure we had clearance on the hood um, and I have a different power source all together here coming in and then uh, this is a fuse link as well and then this ties in with uh, the fan itself so if I ever have an issue I can just come out and unscrew these and then screw these wires together and uh, if uh, this fails which hopefully it'll work out and uh, my AC uh, I've got some uh, work to do on rebuilding my climate control so I just got to tie it off to the side here until I get that uh, rebuilt and then uh, we'll tie that into the AC but it's got it's working good uh, I idled it for quite a while and I've got it set to where it's uh, running between 195 and 201 202 degrees at most when it idles and that's about where I want it so hopefully it'll work out uh, I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for watching.